Thank you. That you're here. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Let's remain standing just a moment and bow our head. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful this morning for the privilege of coming again to the house of the Lord and meeting these lovely people, this lovely pastor, his wife, his loved ones. We pray, God, that as we sit down to study, to study the Word, that you'll meet with us and give us food for our souls. We are longing for this, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You be seated. We deem this a privilege to be back here again this morning for this class. I kind of run down unexpectedly just for a few moments to uh, talk with Brother Littlefield and to have some fellowship. We had such a great time last night here praying for the sick. And this morning I told him I would try to come back and address the Sunday school class before we leave. So a little late I had some friends that just come to see me and I spoke with them out there. And then while I had the opportunity I dropped down the basement to see how this church was um, was fixed down there because we're trying to build one at home ourselves and we like this real well, this pattern, the way it's made. I like this acoustic bouncer here, or what you call it, that uh, seems to be able to take care of the acoustics real well. And then again, I, I hope, if none of them share, if they are, it's all right. I want to thank this year a motel down here, City View Motel, where I stayed last night. And it's very few times in my life I've ever stayed in a motel free of charge, but I did last night. <laughs> it wouldn't even charge me for it. Now, that's really nice. My son also over at the, at the Lehigh Motel, they didn't even charge him for that. And I understand that people was connected coming here at the meeting or something last night, that they made them a discount and things. If you're still here and go to check out, you really thank those people. And sometimes we'd like to come up here on a, on a convention sometime, you know, in a, in a meeting. I hope them men are packed out every night <laughs> from here on. You know, it's written in so much as you've done unto the least of these, you did it unto me. And for uh, talking to the manager this morning, the fine compliments he passed on Brother Littlefield, our brother here. He said, well, I said, I want to pay. He said, no, it's, it's done taken care of. I said, do you mean Brother Littlefield did that? He said, no, we just want to give it to you. I said, oh, mine. I, I said, I don't want to do that, sir. And he said, yes, yes. I said, we have a great respect for Mr. Littlefield, the way he takes care of the people around here, the poor and things, and tries to help everybody. I said, we respect that. So the least we can do is just put in our little part like that to help him out. That's really nice. Try to make him take the money for the motel, and he wouldn't do it. So... Um, that's nice. I just pray that God will bless them, tell us for that. Billy said over where he stayed at uh, Lehigh, that was one of the nicest ladies he ever met. It was there. And he had to stay a little longer. I right? checking out times. That's all right. No extra charge. Nothing. There's no charge at all to it. I, I like to live with people like that. So that's really nice. And, um, you know, with that kind of a spirit, you can work with them. <laughs> If Sam's got that spirit, it's real bad that you can't work with, you know. That, that's the kind you have to watch. <laughs> that you can't tell them nothing. They're just sitting now. There's no need of talking. <laughs> they just got their way and that's all. Well, usually Sunday school lasts four or five hours at home, so we can't do that because we just got about 45, 50 minutes here that we'd like to speak just a little this morning on the Word. Now, you that's got your Bibles... I want you to turn with me in the Bible over to Numbers, the 14th chapter. I want to read a portion of the 14th chapter of Numbers. And let's begin about the 37th verse. Now listen close to this reading. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plagues before the Lord. Joshua. And... Uh, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jabin, which were of the man that went to search out the land, live still. And Moses told these things unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. 
And they rose up early in the morning and get them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which the Lord has pro- promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, now listen to this. And Moses said, Wherefore now do you trespass the commandments of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye may be smitten before your enemy. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up into the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant and the law of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. And the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites, which dwelt in the hills, and smote them and discomforted them even to harm. Now, this is a Sunday school, so you got a great teacher here, brother, our precious brother, Littlefield, and I kind of feel a little reluctant about approaching a Sunday school class, but I'd like to get a little background on this. We all know now that these, all that happened in the Old Testament was examples of what is going on now. As I said last night, God throws a shadow of a negative before a positive comes. And the Old Testament was a shadow of the New Testament. Just like the moon reflects a shadow of the sun until the sun rises. Now we walk in the shadow of the moon in the night, but when the sun rises, then we have the actual sunlight. But the moon only reflects the sunlight to give us what light we have. Now, the Old Testament was a type and a shadow of the New Testament to come. The people walked in what light they had as the moon reflected. But now that Hebrews 1, God in sundry times, old times, divers manners, many men spoke to the fathers by the prophets. But in this last day, He spoke to us through His Son, Christ Jesus. Now, that's glorious. Now, Israel had sinned, and they had been grumbling, complaining, and they came to a place called Kadesh Barnea, and that was really the judgment seat. For out of there went judgment, and there's where Israel was judged, Kadesh Barnea. We're told it's a little place in the desert, the other side of Jordan, and it's got uh, a few palm trees. And they, in there, there's one great spring of water and several small springs, which means a beautiful type we could get here of God's throne being the house of judgment and the little judgment places coming up because Kadesh Barnea means judgment. And there's where Israel was judged because of their chatting and disobedience and interruption of the program of God. A very type of today. The church, in its differences, interrupts the program of God. God wants us to gather as a one heart, one soul, one mind. A real repeat of Pentecost. But... You see, we get so different, and we want it this way, and we just won't go unless it goes this way, and this and what, oh, you know how it is. We just, we, that's what God brings us to that judgment seat again, see, that we must stop that. God's got a program, and let's just get right in it and move on. Don't wait and try to get this and that. You move yourself. God will move those who he's ordained to move that way, you just take your own. It's your your stand. You take your stand. If the next fellow doesn't, how do we know he? It might not be for him to take it. My sheep hear my voice. 
All the Father has given me will come to me. Amen. Now, if that's not so, then Christ told something wrong. Now, I'm going to teach on the subject of presuming. It's just presuming. Now, if we were, the Webster says, to presume is to venture without actual authority or to take it for granted. That's what the word presume means. Go without authority or just take it for granted. Now, this, so many people does that. Just take it for granted. That's all right. Oh, it's all right to do that. Just take it for granted. Now, that's to presume. Now, Israel made a fatal mistake when they did this. Not only Israel, but everybody else that does it. It'll be a fatal mistake when you presume to walk with God when God has not called you to walk with Him. Or when you presume to venture out upon things that's not scriptural. Thinking it'll be all right. It's not all right. Eve presumed. She presumed it would be all right because Satan presented something looked awful nice. But she presumed that it wasn't the Word. You don't want to do that. You want to stay with the Word. Don't move from that. Stay right there. No matter if you stand and remember, man that's ever done anything for God stood alone with God. On the road, there's only room for two. That's you and God. You Man that's ever done anything under the convictions by the Word stood alone. Martin Luther, John Wesley, so forth. Finney, Sankey, Calvin, Knox, Spurgeon, whatever more. See, Moses, Elisha, all of them stood alone on the Word of God. And that's what you've got to do. It's an individual affair. You've got to stand on the Word. Take God's Word. Now, we find out that Israel had come to this place where God and His grace and mercy had forgiven their sins of all their disobedience after miracle after miracle. God said, I've showed mighty signs among them in the preceding verses. I've showed mighty signs and they have ignored all His signs. They just walked right on through it anyhow and did what they wanted to do, what they thought they ought to do. Not what God said, do what they thought they ought to do. Now, that's where the difference is. Or we think we ought to do, and God says do it some other way. We've got to come back and do it God's way, or we'll never pass that spot. You've got to come right back where you left off. I was told not long ago about chaplain. He said he was called in. There was a man who had been machine gunned across the chest like this, a captain. And he was laying dying. So the, the chaplain was called in to him in the tent. And a man was struggling, trying to get his breath. And they just got him off the field. And he, and he said, are you a Christian? He said, I, I once was. He said, well, you better be right away. You're dying. He said, I know it. Caused machine gun bullets and cut him across the lungs some way. He told me, he said, that, that he... he he was dying. His lungs was filling up, gurgling in his throat. And he said, well, now, he said, you once knew him? He said, yes. So now think real hard. Wherever you left him, that's right where you're going to find him, where you left him. Amen. That's right. Yes. How true that is. Right where you leave him in the Word, right there is where you'll have to come back. If God says, you, you go to church, that's all right. You pay your tithes, that's all right. You do these church things, that's all right. But then when he comes back here to uh, uh, receiving the Holy Spirit or a certain thing in his word, and you walk away and say, I don't know about that, right there you leave him. Amen. Right there. You'll never go no further. If you ever find him again, you'll come right back there. You leave the highway. You take a bypass. You come right back to the highway again, you find him waiting right there. Now, that's where that chaplain, he said, this man, I told him, said, think fast. He said, well, I can't think. He said, you better think. And the said, a light come over the captain's face that I remember. He said, start right there. He said, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Where did he leave him at? The cradle. At his mother's knee. And that's where he found him again. See, you'll have to come right back where you left him. And Israel had started but had failed. 
And God's mercy, His grace just kept holding for them and holding for them. And then He come to Kadesh Barnea and Moses chose a one man out of each tribe and sent twelve men across to spy out the land. And when they got there, oh, what a turmoil there was among them. Oh, my. Here they come back and said, why, there's... Why we couldn't take them, while the Amalekites and the Canaanites and Persianites and what all kinds are great walled cities, and some of them are so large, these people, until we look like grasshoppers to them. Oh, they were discouraged. We, now, isn't that just the type of the church today? Yes. We, we just can't do it. We, well, I tell you, it's, it's impossible. Now, we have become this, and we've got to be a little like this, and... Where's the street meetings at anymore? Mm. That's true, young fella. <laughs> There's not very many no more. Where is the all-night prayer meetings we used to have? What's happened to it? Where's that deep sincerity and pressing on with God? What's the matter? We've been cut away from it. We just laid it little by little. Sin is so, so enticing. Oh, it's glamour. And it's got a, a very uh, appetizing appeal, sin has. It's so innocent. Why, it looks so, it looks so innocent. Don't you listen to it. Amen. After a while, when Joshua took the land, God told him, utterly destroy everything there is there. Don't leave nothing. Well, could you imagine some of them Israelite women picking up a little baby? Oh, isn't it cute? Look at it. It ain't even got teeth yet. Joshua said, kill it. The mother said, oh, I'm a mother. I can't kill that baby. You must. hand it here. Why? It might look cute now, but it'll grow up and be just like its daddy. You can't baby sin. It's got to be handled with, not with gloves on, but barehanded. Hallelujah. We want to be nice. Everybody does. We want to, But what is nice? We want to be humble. What is humility? Amen. We want to be full of compassion. What is compassion? Yes. Jesus, a man full of compassion, passed through two or three thousand people, waterhead babies, crippled, blind, halt, withered. He had compassion. What did he do? Walked over to where the Father showed him. A man that had... Maybe prostrate trouble or something. He healed him and walked away and left the rest of them. A man full of compassion. Now, people today, our English words turn the people around. See, that's human sympathy. That's not compassion. There's a lot of difference between sympathy and compassion. Amen. They're two different words altogether. And we use them the same. Yes. Now, the Word doesn't use any compassions. It's got to be obeyed. Amen. Stay with that Word. No matter how bad it cuts, how would you think of destroy babies, innocent women, and things like that so-called? One little leaven leavens a whole lump. That's the same thing started back there with Eve. Yes. It looked awful and cunning. Well, you'll be wise. Surely you'll not die. He's too good. He wouldn't kill you. But surely you're not dying, but it, God said you would die. Amen. That started the whole thing right there. You've got to stay with that word. Regardless, don't pursue and believe. Amen. Amen. Yes. Don't reason. Knowledge has reasoning. Faith has no reason. Faith just holds on to it. Amen. What if Abraham would have reasoned? Think, what if Abraham would have reasoned? hundred years old. Live with his wife, he's his half sister, since she's about seventeen years old. They married. Why well, nature showed all these young manhood and womanhood coming together, husband and wife, not a child. He was sterile and she was barren. Forty years of past menopause. <laughs> totally impossible. Why well, your reasonings would have would have showed that he couldn't have done it. But faith in the word held on to it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith don't take reasonings. Faith holds the word. Amen. Somebody say, I, I believe. I met many ministers say, Brother Branham, I believe that's the truth you're saying. But if I did that, you know what I'd do? I'd be begging to kick me out of a church. They'd just have to kick me. 
Nobody else would have him. He'll have you. You can't live here forever. You've got to go there. Okay? Faith knows no reasons. It just believes. Hallelujah. Separates you. From every, every tire, there's nothing. You stay right with faith. Reasonings drop away. Israel said, now, reasoning shows that, well, if we go over there, well, then one of those men could quit ten of ours, and we're not a military nation. We're not military people. We've got some sticks and spears and things we've picked up, spoils. None of us are trained men. What would we do? That was reasoning. But Caleb and Joshua. Yes. yes. There you are. Hallelujah. Man of faith. Man of integrity. Man who knows. God said down in Egypt, I give you the land. That's good enough. Amen. They run through the people. The people were mourning and crying and said, Now our children will die in the wilderness. Our women will be ravished. And here we are. We'll perish out here in the wilderness. When God had promised He'd give them the land. Amen. Now remember, He gave them the land. But they had to fight for every inch of it. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey. God told Joshua, Everywhere the soles of your feet sets that I give you. Footsteps meant possession. Yes. Now you people that was prayed for, all of you last night was here. Lay, somebody laid hands on you. We prayed. The presence of the Lord came down and revealed Himself. Right with the Word to show it that was true. He's here. Yes. Yes. There's no fooling. There's no mistake. It's there. It's the truth. Yes. We don't pursue anything else. We lay aside reasonings. We cast them down and take the Word. Oh, hallelujah. Take the Word. Move on. The Word said so. Now, you said, then the promise is mine. Sure. But you'll fight every inch of it to your well. Yes. That's right. You'll take, every, you'll take every step of it. It's a battle. The promise is yours. That was a promised land. They had to fight to get every step of it. And the promise is yours. But you'll fight every inch of it. I was called to, by God to preach the gospel 31 years ago. I fought every sense. Yes. Every inch of ground I fought. Yes. With the sword of God taking the promise and cutting away. Hallelujah. Somebody come say, I would belong to the Baptist group. Said, when well, you can't believe that, that wasn't for us. What do you do? Take the sword and cut free from it. <laughs> and keep marching on. Uh, come to the Pentecostal said, if you go with this group, we'll have nothing to do with you. The other group said, if you go with them, we'll have nothing to do with you. Cut loose. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just Hallelujah. keep marching on. Oh, yeah. God. Just keep, had to fight every inch of it. But yes. what is it? It's a promise. Yes. God made the promise. Let's stay with it. God promised it no matter. You've got to have a battle. If everything comes low, lazy, why? You're, what are you overcoming? They overcome by the Word of God and their testimony, the blood of Christ. You've got to overcome something and you've got to have some obstacles and people are different and fuss with you and tell your holy rollers and things. You, that's put before you. It's a trial. If you haven't got that, then you're not even in the battle. What do you yes, join yes. the church? What do you join the army and get training for? To lay around, strut up and down the streets and show off? That's the way some Christians act. Yes. That we want to be looked up to. You ain't going to be looked up to. You're going to be looked down on. Amen. For all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. Amen. Pick up the sword. Cut everything free from him and keep going on. Hallelujah. Joshua. Caleb still the people. They said, we can't take it. We just can't do it. That's all. See, they were looking at the Amalekites. Joshua and Caleb was looking at the promise. Hallelujah. That's the difference. It depends on what you're looking at. Amen. Oh, yes. Joshua said, we're more than able to do it. We're more than able. Why said they're only bread for us? <laughs> Why? They look great. They are great. But we have great bread. <laughs> yes. Said God gave us a promise, and the fear of us is up on every one of them. Amen. Yet they differ with us, yet they're scared of us. <laughs> Amen. Sure. Said the fear of, fear of the Lord's up on every one of them. They're scared to death of us. 
said, let's go take it. God give it to us, so it's ours. Let's move on and take it. Oh, if I could get that Pentecostal group together. That uncircumcised Philistine standing out there and say, we have to have all this and all of that nonsense. Amen. We'll have to kind of go in the uh, World Council of Churches to have fellowship with them. Our fellowship is a, from God. Amen. Not Amen. from no council of man and man-made dogmas. Sure. We are, we are not people of God who expect fellowship from God. Amen. That's where our rights is, is with God. And how can we fellowship with God unless we fellowship in His Word? Because the Word is God. Yes. And the Word's made flesh when it becomes you. Right. If you abide me and my Word in you, then ask what you will. Right. There you are, see? But the Word's got to abide in you. If it don't, the shower falls in it. Well, it can't produce because you don't believe it. Amen. No matter how much you profess to believe it, you've got to believe it. Amen. All right. So, Israel, God called him, uh, Moses out and said, I'm going to destroy the whole nation. Just step aside. Moses interceded, threw himself in a breach. It's Christ and Moses, you see. God would have killed the whole world one time for sin. But Christ threw himself in the breach for the whole human race. Moses threw himself in the breach for Israel. And he said, you made a promise, God. You made a promise that you take them to the land. That's right. What did Moses do to God? When it looked like God is going to do something contrary, he told the word in his way. Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh, I love that. Oh, I feel like shouting. Just talking about it. Put the word in the way. Hallelujah. God can't walk over His own word. Oh my God. Said you promised to do it. You said you would take them to a good land that's flowing with milk and honey. I told them what you said, and here we are. <laughs> yes. We're on your hands. <laughs> God said, I'll take that stubborn bunch and let them rock the wilderness, but I'll take them children of theirs that they said that wouldn't go anywhere, that perish in wilderness, and I'll take them over. That's right. See, sin is horrible. What is sin? Smoking? Nope. Drinking? Nope. Lying? Nope. Committing adultery? No. Nope. That's not sin. No sin about that at all. No. Oh. Telling a lie is not sin. Cursing, using God's name, that's not sin. Uh -uh. Unbelief is sin. Amen. Yeah. Why do you do that? It's because you don't believe. That's it. That. Get back to the cause. See? See? You lie, steal, commit adultery because you don't believe. Exactly. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Before he even starts, he's condemned because he don't believe. Yeah. Now, you do that because you're an unbeliever. If you do that and say you're a believer, you're not a believer. Your own testimony, your fruits prove that you're not. Amen. So you've got to get rid of that before you're even a believer. See? Now, sin is unbelief. And unbelief is sin. Brother. And so you see, that is the trouble. And then they said, well, now I'll tell you what. We've done a lot of this, so we'll just repent. We'll go up here and mourn a few days and cry a little bit. And, and, and God will forgive us for it and we'll go right on. Moses said, why do you transgress the commandments of God? I've told you as his prophet in the name of the Lord that you're finished. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Now, that's just as much commandment as John 3, 16. Amen. <laughs> yes. God's true with you. Why are you trying to rise again? Like I was talking to a fellow over getting at me about it. Hitting the denominations. I ain't got nothing against the people in them denominations. It's that system I'm hitting at. Yeah. Amen. If I seen you floating down the river here towards the falls, and you were in a little old boat, and I know that that boat wasn't going to make that falls, wouldn't I scream at you? Amen. It is that I don't like you. I love you. It's that boat's going to wreck up with you. Yes. yes. Sir. And so those creeds and denominations go to wreck up out yonder because they're contrary to the word. Amen. That's right. It's contrary. Stay with the Word. Don't presume they're all right. They're not. They're contrary to God's Word. So stay with the Word. See? Now, and when we see today the way the church is done, what's been the result? This fellow said to me, but Brother Renner, you're wrong. I said, prove it's wrong. 
Who was a greater man than John Wesley? You say you're as great as John Wesley. I said, I couldn't bear his shoes. But I said, I want to ask you something. If the church would have stayed where John Wesley left it, but what did you do? You got a bunch of Rickies and Elvises in there, and what did you do? You perverted the very thing that he preached for and stood for. God's through with you. He said, I'm writing a thesis on this church. I said, I don't care how much thesis you write. God has rejected you. I said, God rejected every organization and every denomination. He rejected your Pentecostals. Where are they at? Where's the Methodist at? Where's the Baptist at? Where's the Presbyterian? Where's the Catholic? Where's the Lutheran? Every time they do that, God lays them on the shelf and I'll ask any historian. Now, I've put years in studying history. I want you to show me any time that any church ever drawed an organization that God didn't let it die right there and never raise again. I want you to point the place to me. It died right there because it rejected him as ruler. That's exactly what Israel done when they wanted to look like the rest of the nations. They wanted a king. And old Samuel, a prophet, the one the word of the Lord came to, he stood up there and said, I want to ask you something. Call them together. They wanted to look like the rest of the nations. He said, I want to ask you something. Have I ever told you anything in the name of the Lord but what was the truth? There you are. They said, no, all you said come to pass. <laughs> there you are. He said, I've ever begged you for your money from a living. No, Samuel, I don't guess you ever took up an offering for yourself. See? Well, then the Lord wants you to stay and let him be king. Oh, we know all this is true. You're telling us the truth. But Samuel, but we, we want to be like the, the Baptists. <laughs> See? So go ahead. And right there they lost their fellowship. Amen. Right there the church lost its fellowship. If you draw up your creeds, your plans, your doctrines, your Bible doctrines, and then end it with a comma, we believe this plus as much as God will let us have. Show us. That's all right. But you draw it up with a period, we believe this and nothing else, and then this shuts God right out when you make a period. Amen. That's right. The church has continually grown. So there you are. See, so they couldn't go any farther. Israel couldn't go any farther. And so they said, well, we'll go up and repent. We'll try again. We know that God's tenderhearted, so he'll forgive us. And he goes up and Moses said, you're transgression, trespassing the commandments of God. God has said he's true with you and that settles it. Might as well make the best out of it. Stay right here because you're going to rot right here in your own, in your own situation. You brought yourself into this. You put yourself here. So there you'll stay. Now that's what, here it is. I just read it. You put yourself here. You've died here. You're spiritually gone. So here you'll remain. That's where you're going to stay. Well, we'll go try it anyhow. So when him said, Lord, forgive us. I tell you, Lord, we oughtn't to have done this. And cried out. And the next day he said, all right, all you fellows, come on now. Let's go. But they couldn't take the word with them, Amen. the ark. Neither did the prophet go with them. Amen. He stayed back where God told him to. Amen. They went advancing on for a million more. <laughs> but they failed. The Amalekites and them drove them out of the country. They went forth presuming they, that God would be with them. Now, I'm going to... Ain't got too much time. We're facing a holiday. And that holiday is called Easter. This American people that call themselves Christians, I hope I don't act like I know it all. If I do, you, you forgive me, will you? But how in the world am I... If you drive a nail in that tabernacle and let it stay halfway loose, you might as well not put it in there. The first... If all these nails are drove like that, I'm scared to stand under it. Yes, You've got to drive it down and clinch it. Put the pressure on the hammer. Amen. And we're building a house of the Lord. Amen. Drive the nail all the way in. Clinch it on the other side by proof of it. Yes, yes. 
Upon this rock I'll build my church. Right. The spiritual revealed truth of God. Upon this rock I'll build my church. Oh, she'll stand forever. Because it's gospel nails you're driving. God clenches it on the other side by confirming the word. Making it prove what it said it would do. Hey, man, And you got it. The word says so, and God stands right here before you and proves that it's so. Then where are you going to go from there? Now, notice. Now, all will happen on Easter morning. There will be thousands and millions of dollars will be spent on Easter flowers. To put on the altar, just like Cain did. The altar wasn't made for flowers. Cain tried it, it didn't work. The altar is made for human souls. God don't want your flower, He wants you on the altar. You're trying to make a substitute. You're the person who belongs there. Me and you. We're the one who belongs on the altar. But we presume that's all right. God accepts it, we say. It's all right. We presume that that's all we have to do is just do that. Now, we notice that thousands of them won't even do that. They'll get out and get drunk. They know that they're, they know it's Easter. It represents Easter. So they've got a lot of trouble and sin behind them. So they think if they get drunk and forget it all, that's, that's just what they ought to do. That's America. They think that's just what they ought to do. I've seen the strangest sign I've seen a long time, uh, Friday when I went to get my children down to school. I seen one woman amongst that bunch wasn't smoking cigarettes. I went back to my wife. I said, I've seen a miracle. Every one of them women come now. Hello, lady. Right upstairs. See, I... Oh, my. Singing choirs. Blow to church. They presume that's all right. You're going to find out different at the end of the road. Amen. See where you're at now. But they think, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, some of them is good hard enough to donate some money to charity. I did my part. That's not what, that's not that that's Easter. That's not Easter. That's a good thing. Nothing against it. To donate to charity, that's all right. But that's not your duty to God. That's your duty to your fellow man. Your duty to God is give your life to Him. Yes. Give your money to your fellow man. See how we get it? But they presume that's all right. Boy, that, that, that's all right. Oh, some of them take the resurrection to Easter eggs. Bunny rabbits. What in the world has bunny rabbits got to do with the resurrection? Amen. What's Easter eggs and new hats? Amen. Got to do with Easter. A preacher told me, he said, Brother Bram, I... Is a, Camelite preacher, a Christian, he said, I just had to hide my face and laugh at some funny looking hat some women had on. I said, Where'd you take your tax? <laughs> take it where it needs to be. Amen. Don't baby around and pet it. Amen. Amen. You can't pet sin, you got to condemn it. That's right. Condemn the thing. It's wrong. Get away from it. Of course, if he did that, first thing you know, the deacon board would ride to the headquarters and he'd have to be moved right out of the organization. But to me, I'd rather... And then he wouldn't have fried chicken on Sunday. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Couldn't wear a tuxedo on a pulpit. <laughs> Nobody else would have him. The organization, he kicked out of one, he's black marked with the rest of them. See? So he's on the big board up there. I tell you, I'd rather have my name on the big book up there than the big board down here. Yeah, see? God will receive you. But they can't do it. They're afraid of it. Presuming, that's all right. That God will understand. He does understand. He understands that you ought to do what's right. Right. People drink. Try to put the past. And forget about it. You'll never do it. Preachers today preach their doctrine. Their differences and Everything, presuming that's all right. The headquarters said so. That's what they taught the seminary. They think that's all right. Just presuming it's all right. Israel presumed too. Didn't get anywhere. 
Don't pursue him. Be sure you're right. Hmm? Right. They say, well, it's okay. Go ahead. That's well. I belong to this certain thing. And we believe that. Our, our district presbyters teach us this. Our, 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 what did you call them? Little books to write up, you know, our creeds and our, and our doctrine believes this. If it's contrary to the word, throw the thing in the trash basket and take the word. Have one law, love. One book, the Bible. Have one creed, Christ. And just keep going. That's right. That's the way to do it. See? And the people, what do they do? They come and join those things. I hope I don't sound mean to you. But well, i got to make it stick. You've got to go down there somewhere until it clinches. That's right. Yes. When I first started training for boxing, before I got into professional fighting... There uh, used to be a trainer, he called him Six Seconds Smith, the first professional fighter he had. He whipped him in in six seconds. And when uh, I started training, that man liked to kill me. He'd knock me plumb out of the ring and everything else. And I was skipping ropes and running seven, eight miles every day and taking all the training. And I said, Six, why you have to do me that way? See? I said, you just knocked the breath out of me, man. I went to plumb over four ropes from out of there and, and, and amongst them chairs and I could broke my back on me. <laughs> Last said, that'll do you good. I said, do me good. How can he do me good? You're God about to kill me. And he said, look, Billy, I don't care how physical fit you are. Your body's got to be able to stand that comeback right quick. If you take a hard punch, said, if your body's not used to coming back, you'll lay there and take the count. He said, but if your, your body's used to hitting it and then coming back, uh, every time you hit it, that shocks the blood, runs it back to the heart. Said if you do that, said then your body's used to coming back quick when you get knocked down you're on your feet again. See? It said that don't mean a thing when you get knocked down. Up on your feet again, quick. Said you hate me now, but you'll appreciate me when you get out there in the ring. That was right. <laughs> Brother, sometimes I have to knock to who wouldn't have it. <laughs> but I found something. Don't baby him. Hallelujah. You appreciate me when you come to Calvary. When you come to the end of the road, you'll say, Praise God. I'm glad I took that old rugged way. Here I stand washed in the blood of the Lamb. Don't play me around them old creeds and things out there. Come on, get in the way. God has a way, a plan. It's wrote right here in the Bible. Let's stay with that. But the people come join what? They presume they're doing what's right. Then they say, where is God? Where is God of the Old Testament? Where is the God who raised up the prophets? Where is the God that promised all these things? Why, surely he ain't going to work there. He can't. There's nothing for him to work on. My old southern mammy used to tell me, how can you get blood out of a turnip? That's got no blood in it. (laughs) That's right. How are you going to get spiritual signs and wonders in a dead morgue? Right. Ecclesiastical froze up. You got to get spirit in the body of Christ. Amen. That's his word. My words are spirit, said Jesus. They are. Now, people join, they think it's all right. It's right. Presuming it's all right. Preachers go ahead preaching that kind of dogma. And knowing the Bible says another thing, they're preaching it anyhow, presuming they're right. What is it? Taking the tradition of man's and making the commandments of God of non-effect. Amen. They have they have a part of the, the gospel. They preach a part of it. Sure, take a part. Satan took pretty near ninety nine percent of the gospel that God told Eve and admitted it was the truth. But when it comes to this one little thing, he said, "Now nah, I don't say it isn't true, but surely you know it. If that was the day God, you'll be like this. See, don't add nothing." Don't take nothing away from it. Just keep it the way it is. Don't presume anything. Just have faith in the Word. If that Pentecostal church would have stayed with that, the rapture had done been gone. Oh, you say, wait a minute, brother. Now now you said something wrong. No, I never. I never. I know what I said. Amen. In the days of Noah, the Bible said as it was the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Noah... God was long-suffering. Went way past time. See? No willing, not willing that any should perish. See, he went on. On and on, long-suffering. 
The same thing today, of course it was in that day. Waiting for his church to come to recognition of his word and him. But they just keep on. Every time God sends somebody and blasts his way, just as soon as he's taken off the scene, a bunch of Rickies and Elvises get together, you know, with their great DDs. They add this to it and add that to it. And the first thing you know, it's just all gone out. Amen. Our Pentecostals are the same way. Big part of them denying divine healing and everything Amen. else. The worst I was treated on, on divine healing was Pentecostal ministers. Well, I, I rented an armory in a certain city. And I didn't have enough seats to put the people in. Them poor people come off them hills of Arkansas from everywhere, coming to the meeting. And I went to one of the greatest organizations of the of the Pentecostal movement. And it was well, the spiritual thermometer was ninety below zero. <laughs> Why well, you ought to have seen it? And the man had about three hundred benches. He built an ice big church. Sure, po- people think of prosperity. Is a sign of spiritual blessing. That's exactly contrary. I asked him, I said, Can I have these seats? I'll pay you so much for them. He said, I wouldn't let anyone sit on my seats and believe in divine healing. That's Pentecostal. In Kingston, Jamaica, at the racetrack, last year, where the Lord was blessing, they had a Pentecostal minister there. And I was with the Christian businessman. And I said, we had from Cuba, from Haiti, and from the islands around, businessmen sitting there last night. And what did you cause us? I'm ashamed of you. What did you talk about? A fleet of Cadillacs. I was a little bitty fellow in business down on the corner. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord give me this. The Lord bless this. The Lord bless that. I said, that man sat and looked at one another. I said, I've been with you long enough to you know I knew their hearts. The Lord let me know it. I see what they're thinking about. What are you telling them? They belong to these big farmer margs. And they're prosperous or billionaires. I said, how different you are always bragging about what you got and how much you accumulated in this much time. I said, how different it is from the original Pentecost. They sold everything they had to give to the poor. I said, you vice versa. Well, them people knows all about what it means to be rich. They want to find something that satisfies and got some life in it. Yes. That night on the ground, the place where I was talking to the man after I got him over there, I was telling him about a little fellow walked up to me and he said, How wrong you were. I said, Wrong? He said, Yes, sir. When you made that statement about the Pentecostals back there, how the people sold all they had, said that was the worst thing they ever done. Oh, how worldly can you get? And he said, that's the worst. I said, then you mean to tell me that the Holy Ghost made a mistake? What kind of a God are you serving if he makes a mistake? He's infinite. Omnipotent. Omnipotent. Amen. Hallelujah. Sure. How can he make a mistake? He said, I'll prove it to you. They were wrong. That wasn't the Holy Ghost. I said, an act of the Holy Ghost in the Bible wasn't the Holy Ghost? He said, look. I thought, all right, you you brought yourself out here. Now, this is all your own memo. (laughs) This is like putting a rabbit in a pen. If you know where every place is and every hole stopped up, he's got to come back here to get out and stay right here. He'll have to come back to it. You put his head in every hole, but he'll never get through. Just pin him up. Stay right here. And that's the way with one of them. Just keep moving with the word. Just take the word in front of you. Keep moving. You got every hole stopped up out there anyhow. Just keep moving on. Moving on. I said, then the Holy Ghost made a mistake. He said, well, then people made a mistake. I said, they were inspired by the Holy Ghost. He said, look, preacher, when the persecution come and the fuss come up among them, said, that was the Holy Ghost. I said, no, sir. But the Holy Ghost was in the first move. He said, when the persecution come up, those people didn't even have a home to go to. I said, that's what God wanted them to do. So they went everywhere preaching the word. They had a home and went back to it. But God was scattering a message. Hallelujah. They got a home in heaven. But that's the difference. What do they do? Presume that's the thing to do. It isn't the thing to do. Certainly it isn't. Now, ministers preach that. 
presuming it, it'll be all right. It won't be all right. They permit their congregation, their women, to wear shorts, smoke cigarettes. <laughs> their men to have little friendly card parties, pool room, bunk hole in the church, soup suppers, <laughs> pay off the pastor. Everything else is worldly. People join thinking that's all right. Yeah. Well, I live by the Presbyterian parish. And at midnight till the night, there's so much boogie-woogie going on over there in the basement. It was, it was a shame. Or what's this new uh, winder, they call it? Or they, them women breaking their legs and things, doing it. You know, what is that then? Twist. They need a twisting. They need a, they need a gospel plank to straighten it out of them. That's what they need. Good old gospel Holy Ghost sent revival. They need a twisting, all right, around the neck. <clears throat> Gospel cards. <laughs> but they say, oh, he's a good God. He is a good God. But don't you pursue on that. He's a God of justice, too. Yes. He's a good God. Like a little teenage boy sitting out on the say, you know, God's so good, he just don't care what I do. Nonsense. Amen. He does care what you do. Amen. Yeah, you say, God's a good God. God is a good God, but we hear too much of that today. God is a God of wrath. He's a God of judgment. He was good enough to go down there and take Israel right out of the mouth of death and turn right in the wilderness and let them rot because they wouldn't follow him. God was a good God to pull you Pentecostals out of them organizations, but you turned right back around and acted like your mammy, so you're rotten in it. Amen. There's a tape recorder going on here. It goes around the world, you know. I'm not so much speaking here now. Let you rot right in it. And come tell you the truth, then you don't believe it. You're in Israel right here. In the Word. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. They presume that he's a good God. Yes, sir. But he's, they, don't, they don't presume that he's also a God of judgment. Here's where Israel made her mistake. They thought he was so good. He had done so many things for them. Sure, he brought them up out of Egypt. Sure, he did that. He performed miracles. He draw the line, put the pillar of fire between them and the enemy. Sure, God's a good God. Sure. Let them cross over the Dead Sea. And uh, uh, over the Red Sea and cross over into to the wilderness and, and so forth. He's a good God. When any Egypt's in star danger, why well, he protected them in the hour of death. Kill the Egyptians. Sure, he's a good God. But his patience run out. Amen. Then when he spoke that final word, that was it. And Moses said, why are you transgressing the laws of God? God's done said he's through with you. Don't pursue him too far, brother. That's right. You might cross over that line. There's no return. You know, there is a line. Amen. You remember the borderline believers back there in, e in Israel? Just borderlines. Hebrews thir uh, 6 says, It is impossible for those which were once enlightened and made partakers of the Holy Ghost and tasted the heavenly gifts if they shall turn away to renew themselves again to repentance. Save the crucified to themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame and count the blood of the covenant wherewith they were sanctified with an unholy thing and done despite to the works of grace. That's right. God's a God of jealousy. He's a God of justice. If you're a father and mother and you tell your children, you go over there, I'll give you a whipping. If you love that child, he transgresses your laws, you'll keep your word. Right. But if you let him go on, well, that's all right. Do it again. That's what makes all these sure little um, Melinda's and Ricky's and so forth around. That's what makes juvenile delinquency. Some of them talk about the ignorance of the people in the mountains of Tennessee and Kentucky. <laughs> I tell you, some of them old mammies out there would teach some of these modern Jesse Bells how to raise a young'un. Amen. Amen. Let one of their youngins come in with their woman, night girl, or hell, clothes all twisted on her, been out with Ricky all night long somewhere, loved up in a car and said, have a good time, dear. She'd take a hickory limb off one of them trees and she wouldn't get out of the house for another year. Then said it's ignorance. 
They know more about it than... Oh, I better shut up there. All right, go on. Now, Israel will pursue me. Mm -hmm. See what we're hatching out today? Pursue me. Nest full of buzzard eggs. That's exactly right. They're not eagles. They know nothing about the high places, how to get up there. The feathers are so loose they strip themselves naked when they get started in the air. That's right. Altitude to pull the feathers out. And the eagle's the only one has got feathers to stand when he gets up there. His feathers are growed in, fastened down, nailed down. Hey, man! He can go so high to the buzzard or a crow or a chicken hawk or die trying to follow him. God said he was an eagle. I'm Jehovah Eagle and all my children are eaglets. They know how to fly in a high under where he's just up there where you sail along. Hey, oh, I like to watch him. That's yes, sir. Yeah, pursue me. He said, oh, well, God forgive us so many times, he'll forgive us again. So they went up, but Moses said, he's through with you. When you did this, you crossed the line. Let's look back and see if we crossed the line or not. Yes. Where did he draw the line on the Lutherans? Where do you draw the line on the Methodists? Where do you draw the line on the Baptists, on the Camelites, on the Nazarene, on the Pilgrim Holiness? Buddy Robinson's group and all that. Where did he draw the line on? The same place he draw the line on Pentecost. Amen. Right there. Amen. God have mercy. That kills me never to say that. But I'm duty bound to this word to tell the truth. Amen. Yes, yes. But it's the truth. You'll rock right there. She'll never rise again. That's the word of the Lord. Oh, you're presuming. You know, Samson presumed one time too. <laughs> Samson presumed it was all right. God was a good God. He could run around with women. He could do whatever he wanted to do. And it'd be all right. He could expose God's secrets to him. And it would be all right. See what it was? A woman. Church. Yeah. Woman represents church in the Bible. Delilah is that old Jezebel of the day. Amen. Right. So, so first thing you know, he got himself wrapped around her, and she wrapped him around the finger, and she done just exactly. Amen. And he found out all of his strength was gone. Amen. So exactly what's happened to the church today. He wrapped himself around these creeds and man-made things and organizations, denominations, and getting away from the Word of God and formalness, and the church looks like the rest of the world and acts like the rest of the world, and the first thing you know, you find the Holy Spirit's gone. Amen. The strength of the gospel is away from you. What's the matter? I hope I don't hurt you, but I hope I scorch you so that you I'd rather be scorched than burned anyhow. So, so, listen! Stay with the Word. Samson, he presumed, is all right. God was still there. That's what the church thought. When they went out here, well, God's still there. He's a good God. He don't care. You old timers here, when your mammy and pappy back in her 50 or 60 years ago, or when they come out of them organizations and things to be free with God, to worship God and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, come up out of Egypt, well, if you'd have talked to them, if they'd ever went right back and done the same thing as the Egyptians done, the world, they'd have laughed in your face. Amen. But they did it. Yes. They did it. Oh, we presume it'll be all right. Don't presume! Stay with the Word. Amen. You had to compromise. Why'd you have to compromise your great evangelical doctrine that you get in the, in the World Council of Churches? Amen. What are you doing acting just like they're doing? What's the churches acting like they're doing? What's the school? Same thing! Amen. Even our holiness schools are getting so bad. And things like that. The perversion and everything else setting in among them. Amen. What we need is the power of God in there to call out that sin. And right here, just pour it out. Say, here you are. Amen. That's what gifts are sent in the church. But they teach so much theology and science and, and stuff until they got the Holy Spirit grieved out. Amen. That's the reason that our pre-mothered girls and so forth is taking place. That's the reason so much sin among us. That's the reason you can't tell people. They're so smothered over the things of the world, the cures of the world, and the things of... Just so we stand in good standing with the church, so we stand in good standing with the presbyters, so we stand in good standing here. What difference does that make? Stand in good standing with God. 
Let the rest of them go. If they want to follow, let them follow. If they don't, let them stay where they're at. You're bound for the promised land. Like God said to Joshua, a very type of them new ones coming out. He said, you've been on this mountain for 40 years. Wandering around. What did they do out there in 40 years? Did God curse them? No, he blessed them. Oh, they married wives and grew good crops and raised babies. and Oh, they, they had a wonderful time. God was with them. But it still wasn't the promise. Amen. Right. Listen, I'm going to say something now. <laughs> Might scorch you, but listen. That's exactly what Pentecost has done. She organized down like the world. But she never did get to the full promise. She did come out of Egypt. She did. God took care of her. Showed her wonders and signs and miracles. But never to the fullness. You know it's the truth. And the old fighters died. <laughs> Exactly right. Now that's where we got again. We've been wondering how long? About 40 years. Bless God, I'm a oneness. Hallelujah. Bless God, I'm assembly. Glory to God, I'm a church of God. We're the this kind. We're the that kind. You're nothing. As long as you think that, you're nothing. The Bible says when a man thinks himself, himself something, he's nothing. He is, he is nothing that he ought to be. That's exactly right. You think yourself nothing. Come down so God can t- empty yourself out. You're trying to fill yourself up. You empty. That's the biggest job for the church and the individual is empty itself. That's rough. But it's good. <laughs> this reminds me of my mama. When we was little kids, we was raised awful poor. And so we didn't have much to eat. And Mom used to, Pop used to get some meat skins from the bakery down there the, where they baked them hams and things. And, and they'd, uh, uh, Mrs. Goodman, an old German woman, she, they used to bake the hams. They'd cut these skins off the hams and Papa would go down and get them. And Mama put them in a bread pan. Oh, they done forgot the bread pan long ago up in my country. Of course, not you Southerners. And they put and the old meat skins in there, put them back in the oven and bake them out, you know, like that, and get the grease out of it to go into cornbread. And we made corn cakes for breakfast. We had sorghum molasses and corn cakes, and that's what we lived on. Dinner time, we had poke greens if it was up yet, <laughs> black eyed peas or something like that. And we had just poor eating and so forth. Mom, every Saturday night in school, she'd give us all a bath, all in the same tub, same water, just add a little more. You know, as you come down from the, to the, uh, give the little one first, and the last one got the dirt of all of them, but we made it. We made it. Cleanness is, is not so much that you wash the outside, but what about the inside? Amen. White it was. Polish the outside of the sepulcher, but the inside, dead man's bones. Amen. You're so close today, all the telecasts and things that you keep the dirt off your hands, and the nice detergent, and that's all a lie. I come home the other day, seen something on, on the television or telecast or something, or stand down at the filling station. This man said, Y'all, you don't even have to wash dishes no more. Just put it in there and takes everything right out and just set it up. I said, I'll do the dishes for you, Beatty. I went and got me a bottle of this stuff, and I said, I'll do the dishes. And I dumped her in there, suds raised about like this, and I set the dishes down and let them set a half hour, took out the eggs, is still on them. <laughs> Nonsense! That's what they get all this. When you hear all this big advertisement, when anything so advertised, there's nothing to it. If the product's any good, it sells itself. That's where the old time religion, you don't have to have great big thousand dollars big organization. It'll sell itself. Got a lot of sin removed. You call join this and we're the holy this and the holy that's holy nothing. That's right. God is the only one who can remove sin. The blood of Jesus Christ. And he does it when you fall in his wash pan. That's right. Right. He's the only one who can do it. Samson presumed that everything was all right. Oh, God had just done so many things for him. That's what we thought. God done so many things. Israel thought the same things. Oh, God did it before. What if we make if we do this? We don't care. God's with us. They presumed his all right, but they found out the battle went the other way. Now, when we go up to take the land, we find out we're in the same position. That's right. You know, Achan thought the same thing. He had the commandments of God. Not to take nothing out of that cursed city. Amen. I just got about 12 more minutes. So I got to get over to that motel. I won't drive this one down a little bit tighter. See, look here. That's exactly what we did. See, a nice Babylonian garment that Aiken Tuck in a wedge. He thought that city was cursed. And everything in it was cursed. 
And the denominations is proved cursed. That sounds horrible, but it's the truth. I said a while ago about my mammy. She'd make us every Saturday night because eating that poor food. She'd make us take a big dose of cast oil. Every, I can't stand the smell of the stuff you get in this room and I'll gag. I just can't stand it. So much of it. And I'd take and hold my nose. I'd come up and i say, Mama, I just can't take the stuff that just makes me gag. She said, if it don't gag you and make you right good and sick, it don't do you no good. <laughs> That's why I'm preaching the Word. Yeah. If it don't gag you, get your stuff, get to reading. Get out of them old creeds and get down to the Word. Search them, see if they're right. Uh, don't do you no good. It'll stir up your spiritual gastronomics. <laughs> yes, sir. Gets you started right. That's rude. Hard way to make an expression, but it's the only way I have. I'm rude myself, and I ain't got no education. I just have all like John. The only thing he know was serpents and axes and things of the wilderness. The only thing I know is just what I know, and that's all I know. <laughs> Oh, I, I just have to say it the way I see it, the way, the way it comes to me. It could be expressed a lot more cleaner and nicer than that, but you know what I'm talking about. That's why yeah. I mean, you know what I mean. So that's it. You've got to get back to the Word. Get away from all this old stuff anyhow. All right. Now, uh, Aiken thought that'd be all right. I'll take this nice little wedge, and it'll be a nice little outfit, and I'll have this nice little thing here, and I'll be the presbyter, and so forth, and I, I, it'll be all right. But it was cursed! Amen. Everything in that fallen place was cursed. And it is today. We don't want no Aikens. We don't want no... They never could get going on and win a battle until that thing was destroyed. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. The Egyptians presumed that it'd be all right. Israel went through the Dead Sea. Why couldn't they? Uncircumcised. Didn't have the blessings of the covenant. They presumed it's all right. But to find out, they drowned. You can't go through this, can you? cannot come in to the fellowship of God bringing on world-made doctrines. Amen. You drowned. Amen. You perish with them. Amen. You got to come God's way or no way. Amen. Got to line up with the word or you're out. Amen. You die there. So, but Egypt thought, well, they went through it. I'm just, we're just better man than they are. We're healthier, stronger, smarter. Well, them guys can't even write their name. Um, we are masters. But the masters didn't go very far. God don't count mastery the way the people does. Now try it. Noah's time. They thought, now, if it does come up, well, now, if it does come a big rain, there never has been one. But if they do, well, we got ships and boats. You say they didn't have them. They did have them. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah. Amen. Same time. Amen. They dig up cities and things now. It's sunken with all modern waterworks in it right here in Mexico. A few years ago, everything. Sure. Amen. There's nothing new under the sun. Amen. We just ride our own ships. They pursued they'd be all right. But God had one ship was going to float and the rest of them was going to sink. Amen. But they presumed that their ship would last, float any way that this thing would, no matter whether it was scripturally made or not. I could say something here. Listen, that's the way today. You think that the thing will float, it'll be all right, whether it's scriptural or not. It's got to be solid scriptural. God told Noah to make that ark out of shittim wood. And that wood's lighter than balsam. There's nothing in it. Just a great big hollow sponge. Well, I could pack a seal of it from here out to there and the end of the, fla- uh, the wall back there and it'd be six foot thick. I could lay it up on my shoulders and walk away with it. Well, it's nothing but just a sponge. There's nothing in it, said him would. What did he do after that? That represented you. You got to get everything out of you. Amen. All your creeds and doctrines away. Amen. Then what did he do? He said, pitch it inside now. How did it get pitched? They cut down a tree and beat it. Beat the life out of it. 
the pitch out of it and then took the hot pitch and poured it in there and all those empty places soaked up. Then it's a lot harder than any steel that there is. You couldn't flinch it. That's the reason it stood the judgments. There was one had to be beat down, the righteous one, Christ. We empty ourselves out and let the Holy Spirit come in. The Word of God come in. That sets you. Judgments when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. It has to be. Oh, yes. But they thought it was just the same. You see, it's all right. They presume uh, it'd be all right. That's the way today they say our denominations. I presume that it's all right. Oh, you don't tell me. I'm days of miracles. There's no such a thing as this. It'll be all right. Aren't we a church? Go ahead. Drop right into the judgment. That's all right. <laughs> There's so many different denominations to the causes of confusion. <laughs> People just presuming that it's all right. Go right ahead. We don't know where you, which is right then. Which is right? Give them the word test. That's the one that tells whether it's right or not. That's it. Deuteronomy 22, 18, you know, it said... If there be one among you who is spiritual or a prophet, I, the Lord, will speak to him. And then if he's with the Scripture, it will come to pass. This is what he says. It will be all right. See, Mark 16 says, These signs shall follow them that believe. John 14, 12, Jesus said, He that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also. There we are. Now we're getting all right. <laughs> when John came out to introduce which was the right way, the Pharisees had their way. Sadducees had their way. The publicans had their way. Different ones had their way. Their denominations, their organizations. John didn't go to any of their schools. He went out in the wilderness and waited. He studied the Word. The first thing you know, God told him out there in the wilderness that this Messiah would have a sign following him. As he always did, what we talked about last night. So John waited. He didn't join any of them. He just waited till he was sure. He didn't pursue anything. He said, now, wait a minute. There's the Pharisees. They're good people. They're holiness people. Well, sure, they're all right. I, he didn't, he, I presume they're all right. They wasn't. God, John waited for the sign. John waited till he was sure. See? Certainly he did. He didn't presume. He waited till he seen the true sign of the Messiah. Nathan, he was just as irritable as he could be. He just said, no, I don't believe it. I'll have to see it. When he got up there and seen that he was the Messiah, he was satisfied then. He didn't pursue. He just waited till he was seen. It. The Queen of Sheba, she waited till she seen it. She said, now, it's a long, she's a heathen, you know. Said, if I go up there, all these things, what I do and so forth, I understand it. If there's a, if their God is living in a man called Solomon, their king, they've loved him so much they made a king out of him. And I, if he's God, if I, I read these words, if, if that sign is in that man, then that man's talking about God. I'll go up and see. So she saddled up her, Camels and tuck out across the desert and got up there and pitched her tent out there and waited, you know, and she waited. And the first day, maybe she sat way back in the back of the church and she seen Pastor Solomon come out and in the temple and all these men around him and all oh, they had a great thing there. Now, she wanted to be sure that she was right. So then the first thing you know, he noticed that discernment was just perfect. Finally, her prayer card was called and she got up on the platform. And the Bible said there was nothing that Solomon didn't know about her. That's right. She didn't pursue many more. She said, all I've heard is the truth and more. It's greater than what I was even told. She said, blessed is the man that you're with you and can see these things happening day by day. Just let me take a little bit of ground out of here back down here so I can kneel on it. I'm going to go back. That's your God be my God. She wasn't pursuing nothing. She watched him wait until she seen the true sign of God. The woman at the well, she knew there was a Messiah coming. She knew what he would do. So no matter what they did, she didn't pursue him. But as soon as she seen that, she looked and she said, wait a minute. You must be a prophet. He looked like just an ordinary man. He said, we know there's one coming and the Messiah will do such and such thing. He said, I'm he. Then I went to the city. She went, presuming nothing. Come out, you fellows, and bring your, all your doctrines and bring all your creed books and so forth. And let us see if this be the Messiah. Let us, it possibly could be. She didn't pursue nothing. She said, come see who I have found. Amen. Amen. Come see, we found it. There's no mistake about it. She wasn't pursuing nothing. She knew what she was talking about. She knew she was right. The disciples, 
the disciples at Pentecost. What if they had said, now wait, let's see. It's, uh, let's see, Jesus give us a commandment. So he told us to come up here. We know our Lord can't lie. Look how innocent, how sneaking sin is. Now, he told us we would receive the Holy Spirit when we come up here. I'm going to listen to this doctor. Oh, uh, you know, uh, Andrew, come here a minute. Yes, yes, sir. Matthew, what do you think? Uh, John, come over here. Now, you know our Lord can't lie. True. He told us to wait up here until we had uh, been received the promise of the Father. And we was going to receive the Holy Ghost. You remember he raised his hands up on us and breathed up on us and said, Receive you the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, brother, I believe we got her. I presume we've got it. Oh, you miserable hypocrite. <laughs> I believe we got it. I think we are to accept it by faith. You Baptist. <laughs> we accept it by faith. By faith, nothing. It's an experience. I can see Peter, that trained man, standing up there. Live with Jesus. He said, wait a minute. That's not scriptural. Amen. Well, I presume we have it. Nonsense. We are to start our ministry. Well, we done been here nine days. What are we waiting on? He said, until, didn't he? Amen. <laughs> until. Not nine days, ten days, or fifty, or hundred. He said, wait until. That's where we made our mistake. Amen. Yes, sir. Presuming it's all right. A lot of us presume because we got speaking in tongues that that was all we had to do. That's right. We stayed there and spoke in tongues and somebody encouraged us and we spoke in tongues. We presumed that was all right. Go on back out. That's the reason you women still bob your hair, wear makeup, shorts. That's the reason you men still have your things and go on the way you do it. You're just presuming. That's right. Stop it! Stop it! Come back to the Word. Amen. Remember, Amen. I can see Simon stamps it. Wait a minute! Isaiah said, precept must be upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little yes. and there a little. Amen. Oh my. I can see him call back to the Scriptures. We're not going to pursue anything. We're going to wait here Amen. until something happens. <coughs> That's right. Well, I'll tell you, brethren, let them go do what they want to. We'll just organize our own little group and we'll call ourselves the so-and-so and let them stay if they want to be fanatically. There you are. That's right. Stay with the Word. Paul said they went out from us because it wasn't of us. That's right. Yes, sir. Oh, how many I could just... I got so many scriptures right out here. It'd take me all day and I just can't stay any longer. Just presuming, presuming. That's all they do. Think it, it'll be all right. Presuming it, it's all right. Daniel, they presume there. Down in, they presume it'll be all right. Take God's holy vessels and drink out of them. They presume it's all right to laugh at people that had the Holy Ghost. It's all right to, to make fun of them. The Bible said it's better for you that a millstone was hanged at your neck and drowned into the depths of the sea than even to offend one of the least of these, my little one. Brother, I see these people walking through the streets, these stretched out, wanting necks, blah, heels on about so high, women pushed out in front and out in the back and around like this. And some woman said to me, he said, ah, a Pentecostal woman said, well, wearing these little bitty skirts, you know, just about halfway down to their knees. Said, well, Brother Bram, said, that's the only kind they make. They make sewing machines that sell good. Hey, <laughs> see, that old... Dirty spirit is in you. Why would a Pentecostal woman want to act like that? I, she's not Pentecostal. She's got a name of Pentecostal. I better get away from that right quick. Turn to the next page. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Moses. What if he would have pursued? <laughs> Don't pursue. Stay with the Word. Don't accept nothing different. Stay exactly what God said stay with. Stay with the Word. Amen. God is obligated. God's obligated to His Word. And if the Word's in you, He's obligated to you with His Word. But when you do like Eve, doubt one little speck of it, and move something into substitute, you're out right there. 
Stay with the Word. Let's not presume anything. Let's just take what the Word says and believe it. Will you do that? Now, look, friends. That's rough. And uh, I got to be at that place in about five minutes. At the end. I, I got to go. So I, I, I usually my talks are so much longer, but I, I got to move. But God bless you. God bless you. I, I love you. God bless you. I don't mean to be mean. I don't mean to have to cut and tear. A lot of times that cuts me worse than it does you. God. But brother, sister, I got to meet you, you understand? Yeah. And if I stand there and he looked around at me and say, You deceiver! Their blood's required at your hand. Amen. Because mm-hmm. I know different. And woe unto me if I don't tell it. Uh, you can... I just pray that you won't fall out with me, but you just take the word and sit down and find out if that isn't true. Search these organizations, denominations. Go back. You, you owe it to yourself. Why, if there was something that's going to harm you physically, you do everything in the world. Get lawyers, attorneys, and everything else to protect yourself. Get a bodyguard if your life is threatened. Everything else, you would do it. See? What about your soul? Your eternal life is affected. You ought to go back and see what happened to organizations, what's always happened to them. I'm not against organization, the people in there. I'm not against the Catholic. I'm not against the Baptist, the Presbyterian. Well, if I'd ask this morning in this church here, I thank the Lord for giving me millions of friends around the world. And they're Catholic, Baptist, Presbyterian. What is it? Now, that Christian businessman that I'm with right now, going all over the world with them people, why is it? I tell them it's the same as I tell anything. Yes. Now, I said that the other day in a meeting, and one of the headmen stood up. He said, that's the way we have you with us. Yes. said, you keep with the Word that keeps us lined up. That's right. People admire you if you'll tell the truth. Yes. How many of you girls appreciate a good old mother that spared not the rod but kept you lined up? Yes. You appreciate her? Yes. How about that old gray-headed daddy? He's out here in the graveyard today. Do you love him? Yes. <laughs> Why, he was a daddy. That's right. But that one who let you, I seen a boy the other day, stole and everything else and carried on Why his mother upheld him in him. And he said, if my mother, he's going to prison, would have made me take them things back. I wouldn't be going here today. There you are. See? That, won't you be wishy-washy? God wants you to stand on what's true. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads just a moment. Our Heavenly Father... I don't know. We may never meet again like this. This may be our last morning together. I just don't know. I pray thee to be merciful, Father. Grant your blessings to this people. And Lord, I I know uh, sometimes it's cutting, but it's a sword. It's a sharp. uh, Your Bible in the book of Hebrews said the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. And this sword can only be handled by the hand of faith. That is, with a definite call. A spirit of God behind it to back it up and show that it's God with a spirit that can make it prove that it's right. But God made the people see it. This humble little person of my brother here, brother and sister Littlefield, the two are one. And it's love and it's charity. I remember one time they called you to a, a man. He was a Roman, but they said, He has done great things for our nation. He's built us a synagogue. He's worthy. God setting under the anointing by the side of the man. I know down in his heart he loves me. Believes it. He knows it. And I love him. And you know that, Lord. And I've told him the hours couldn't get too long, the night's too dark, or the rain fall too hard. But any time I could join hearts with him to pray for his little congregation, do anything that I could, as long as it wasn't contrary to your leading, I'd do it. He feels the same by me. Now, Lord, may my blessings rest upon him. Grant it, Lord, his little church here. Standing here in the hall with the boys a few moments ago and hearing him telling about when some person said, what will you do with the poor? He said, I'll take them with me. That's right, Lord. That's the Spirit of Christ in you. 
as Moses throwed himself in the breach and said, Lord, take me, leave them. The Spirit of Christ in him. I pray that you help Brother Littlefield and Sister Littlefield. Give them, Lord, the, the power of the Spirit of God. May they be blessed. May, their, may they feed these people, Lord, physically and spiritually. Grant it, Lord. Bless the little church. Bless the deacons, the trustees. May the little church stand. And from this little place here, when the rapture comes, may there be literally dozens leaving here in the rapture. See these old men, feeble, these old women, gray hair, wrinkled face. See her and dad with their kiddies around them, their grandchildren standing. All at once, see grandpa turn back to a young man, grandmother, leaving them. All this robe of flesh will drop and rise. Seize the everlasting prize. Shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell. I pray, God, that you'll bless them. And if I've done anything wrong, if I've cut or hurt anyone, Lord, I, I didn't mean to do it in that manner. Maybe there was something need to be cut. So I just lay the word there. It's a seed. Now let it come forth as a great crop. May there come forth such a spirit in this church, Lord, that the power of God will be known throughout all the regions around about. May out of here go missionaries. Out of here go famous pastors. Grant it, Lord. Give food, sheep food to them, Lord. They desire sheep food, thy word. Magnify thyself, Father, in our midst. Through Jesus' name. Now, Lord... If there be those here today who doesn't know you, may they accept you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. While we have our heads bowed. I want a real honest question to be answered. Do you feel that you're walking in the light of God? I'm not going to ask if you're not. Of course, you're, you're just presuming now. But down in your heart, you know that there's things written in that Bible for you to do and you don't do it. As long as you do that, friends, don't presume. Let's be right. You're not going to be judged by your creed. You're not going to be judged by your feeling. You're going to be judged by this word. And if you know you've been wrong, with every head bow and eye closed, will you just raise your hands and say, pray for me, Brother Branham. I pray now that God will help me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 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 You, God bless you, that's fine. Be honest. God bless you, lady. God bless you. <laughs> Praise God, I see it. I've seen a woman heal right then, sick, sitting right here. Of course, she raised her hand. She was honest. She got healed. God bless you, sir. Right? You said, Brother Bram, how do you know that I know it? <laughs> yes, sir. God be with you. Just be honest. I know I don't. God bless you. You, you, you. Yes, dozens of them. God bless you. He sees. He. I might miss your hand, but he don't. He's infinite. He knew whatever gnat would be on the earth before the earth is created. How many times he'd bat his eyes and how much tallow he'd make. Sure, it's God spoken more every bit of it. He knows that he's infinite. You know what? In infinite, the word come infinite. See, he's just he's infinite. There's no explaining to it. You can't explain it. It's eternal. He's eternal. He knows everything, even a thought. Every thought you'd ever think, he knew it before he was ever born. That's the reason by foreknowledge he could predestinate. He knows what you're going to do. He can make it all work to his glory. Bless you. I've come to you in the name of the Lord. While you have your heads bowed. I've tried. I've preached awfully hard, but it, it's true. Well, last night we had a healing service, but I feel led to do something right now. I see still people here that's sick meeting. Let God speak whether I told you the truth or not. Let God speak to you. Heavenly Father, now speak. I spoke, now you speak, proving that it's true. Grant it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, I want it, everybody in here that's sick, I want at least 
get two or three for a witness before I leave here and turn the service to Brother Littlefield. I just be in prayer. Now you pray and say, Lord Jesus, it says in the Bible that we have a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Now, if that high priest is Jesus Christ, all believe that's the amen. amen. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God, Jehovah's Son? Do you believe he's alive? And is he now seated on the throne of God, ever living, to make intercessions upon our profession? And if he's a living high priest, how did he do? When he was a high priest here on earth, a woman one day touched his garment and he turned around and told her that her blood issue had stopped. Was that the action of the high priest? That he's the eternal high priest. Then he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, he's the vine. Let me just take myself, if you'd excuse it, and God be merciful to me. I'll be the branch. Let it bear its fruit. See if we're at the end time or not. Pray. And it, I see it's shadowing a, a young man, but I know the man. I see that light hanging right over a boy, looking right towards me, but I know him. He's been healed. I ain't go, before. He's going to be all right now. I won't say a word about it. Here it is right up here near me, about the second or third row back. It's over a woman. It's got complications. I don't know her. I hope she gets it. Lord, tell me who she is. Miss Cox? Believe. Do you? You can receive what you ask for. Woman sitting close, back close. She has choking spells. Amen. Praise God. I'm a stranger to you. I don't know you. Mrs. Alloway. That's right. I've never seen a woman in my life. Do you believe? Amen. Have faith. Going down. Mm-hmm. Now you believe it? What happened? She touched the high priest. Can you understand? What about you sitting there, lady that's praying, got domestic trouble? Miss Miller? He did wrong. Run away with that woman. I never seen a woman in my life. God in heaven knows that truth. What did she do? She never touched me. She's 30 feet from me. But she touched the high priest. What is it? This gospel I preach to you is the truth. Do you believe it? Then walk in the light. Walk in the light of the gospel. Believe him with all your heart. Will you accept him? Will you will you get away from all creeds and everything else and accept the Messiah, the Holy Spirit of Christ? You believe it? With all your heart, raise your hand. Now what is it here? How many was that? Is that two? Three. Three. That's enough. That's enough. I see it over a man hanging right here in the corner. What am I telling you? That's not me telling you. That's God telling you now. A man can say anything. We have so much bogus going around called discernment. The Lord tells me somebody here's got a kidney trouble. Who is it? Where are they from? What about them? It's impersonations. Pursue me. Don't you realize what the scripture says about this last day? Don't you realize the last thing we're supposed to receive? What did it say in Malachi 4? Just before the evening shadows had fall. Oh, you said that was fulfilled in John. It wasn't. Malachi 3 was fulfilled when John came. Malachi 4, he said, just before the day that the Lord will judge the earth and burn it with fire. That if God didn't burn the earth with fire when John came, then it isn't that time. He was Malachi 3. Malachi 4 is to be presumed now. Now is when he's supposed to be. 
Now, we're not presuming anything. We see it. We know that God is here, the Holy Spirit, the great, the God of Elijah, the Holy Ghost, the witness of the last day, pulling his ministry right into the church, the same thing that our Lord did. The high priest is descending from the throne to the church. And the church is heaping itself up with the Word because he can only come to the Word. He is the Word. The Word can't come to a, the almanac. It won't fit. So the Word has to come to the Word. You abide me and my Word in you. Man shall live all the Word of God. Here it is. You believe it. Accept it then. Now let's pray. Thank you, Lord. If I never get back to this lovely church again, at that day of the judgment, the blood is off of my hands. I've cut and tore and done everything, Lord, look like we're enough to kill a person. If they continue on, and these tapes right here, all of them across the world, if they continue on after they see this and know it's a magnetic tape, these things happen. Not guesswork. Not something you're presuming, but something that's spiritual, revealed in the Word and proven to be. Oh, then in our midst this morning is that lovely one. That Holy Spirit that shall stand there that day and bring this to our memory. God's big magnetic tape will be played that day. God have mercy on me now. Have mercy upon the church. Have mercy upon this congregation here this morning. Have mercy upon the poor people, Lord. Many of them are led in all kinds of ways by false prophets, deceiving, lying wonders, unscriptural, blood, fire, smoke, oh God, <laughs> unscriptural. Deceiving. The Bible said it would be that way. God, they think you're trying to push something over. What can I do, God? I don't know what to do, God. They think maybe you're trying to be a know-it-all or I pray that you'll straighten that in their hearts. Lord, let them know that it's you. It's the Holy Spirit proving His Word to be right. There's so many hands went up a while ago, Lord. Church members and everything putting up their hands. You revealing each hand when they go up. There's their heart. That's what it is. Seeing their condition. Some of it unconfessed sin. Oh, God be merciful. I pray that everyone put their hand up will never meet the judgment out in of God. May they escape the judgment and go in the rapture like Noah rode over the judgment. Grant it, Lord. Like Abraham, be out of the judgment. Have mercy, I pray. Bless these people now. Forgive their sins. May the sweetness and mellowness and tenderness of the Holy Spirit Rest upon each of them. You are a God. I love you, Lord. Oh, I adore you. You, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley. Oh, if I could reach out my arm and put it around you, Lord. I'm not worthy. Let me touch your foot or something, Father. I know you're standing right here, right here at the platform. That glorious nail-scarred one. So close, so in another world. Another dimension standing here. We see your pressure and power of your spirit moving among our flesh, Lord. Oh, adulterous people as we are. And then you moving among us and sanctifying us with your blood to fulfill your word and pressing your Holy Spirit into us to let us know things that's past, future, and present. Oh, God, you're a God. How I love you, Lord. How I adore you. Oh, no wonder we can't find a name for you. Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, oh, the Lily of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon, He that was, which is, and shall come, the root and offspring of David, the Word, the life, the joy, the all, your God. How I love you, Lord. I praise you, adore you, massless one, you great eternal one, made flesh and dwelt among us. Now you're in a pillar of fire, moving around to your, showing yourself the same pillar of fire when it was in a body called the Lord Jesus, the first son, the only begotten son, now through adopted sons, 
showing that you're still God. We're not lost. We're saved. We're not in the fall. We're not in denominations. We're not in creeds. We're in the power and the resurrection of our Savior. How we praise thee, Lord, for thy goodness. 